Hello, everybody. <clears throat> My name is Magda Detlaff, and I would like to present you a talk about a differential in graph and Roman domination number of a graph. I work at the Gdańsk University of Technology in the Institute of Mathematics at the Faculty of Applied Physics and Mathematics. I'm one of the organizer, but this year I decided to prepare a talk, short talk for you about these two parameters and um, relation between these two parameters. <clears throat> In case of differential, it is a parameter defined by Hedet Niemi 25 years ago, as described in this paper of Louis Highness Hedet Niemi, Hedet Niemi and Slater. Uh, Hedet Niemi defined this uh, parameter and they started to work on this topic. Also, Goddard and Henning worked in this topic. And uh, to define the differential, <coughs> uh, we can um, take an arbitrary graph and we consider the following game. Uh, we can buy tokens. We have to pay $1 for each token. We can place tokens in the vertices. And then if a vertex is a neighbor of a token, this, we, we can receive money from this vertex. $1 from each such a vertex. We can see the example. Uh, consider this simply graph on five vertices. Uh, we buy one token for one dollar. And if we place this token in vertex X, we see that we can obtain one dollar from this neighbor, one dollar from this neighbor, and one dollar from this neighbor. So we obtain three dollars. We spent one dollar for this token. So in general, for this set of tokens, our profit is $2. In particular, if we place tokens in each vertex, we only spend money for tokens and we have no, uh, no profit. And if we uh, don't buy any tokens, it means that uh, we don't spend money for tokens. It, we also don't receive any money. So the profit is equal to zero. So in some cases, for some sets of tokens, this profit can be negative number. And so some for other sets, it can be zero or it can be a positive number. Of course, we are interested, we are businessmen. So we are interested to maximize our profit. So it means that we have to choose the vertices in the graph such that we receive as much as possible uh, in the same time spending not uh, as mm, minimum as possible, as less as possible. So uh, we have to find such a set of vertices that our profit is maximized. Uh, to describe this problem uh, more mat in, ma in mathematical way, uh, first, we have to define external neighborhood of a set of a vertices D, a subset of V. It is such a set of the vertices outside of D that this vertex has a neighbor in D. It means it's an open neighborhood of D minus D. In this example, this external neighborhood of the vertex X, these three vertices are in this external neighborhood. We don't consider this vertex because this vertex doesn't have a neighbor in our set D. Our set D consists of only one vertex X. And uh, in this sense, the profit of the set, in now uh, we call it the differential of D, it's the uh, number of vertices in the external, uh, external neighborhood minus number of the vertices in the set D. It means this is our income, how much we obtain from the neighbors, money, dollars, minus how much we have to spend for tokens. So it's not uh, difficult to see that this parameter is equal to our profit from the set. 
And because we are interested in maximizing this profit, so if we consider maximum over all possible subset of the vertices of a graph G, then we obtain the differential of a graph G. Of course, if the set D is empty, this parameter is equal to zero. So, in, for, so for a graph G, differential of a graph G is always greater or equal zero. For the set, it can be negative, positive, or zero. But for a graph G, it is always greater or equal zero. We have uh, another example, <clears throat> another graph. We can think what is the best option to put tokens in which vertices and how many tokens is better to put. Sometimes it's not necessary that every vertex outside is uh, has a neighbor uh, as a token, but we have to maximize the profit. So the first idea is to put the token in a vertex with the greatest degree. If we put the token here, we obtain money from these four neighbors of this vertex. So the first token is good to put here because we spent $1 for a token and we receive $4 from the neighbors. So if we put one token here, we receive $1 from the neighbors. We can observe what happens here. <clears throat> so here, if you put a token in this vertex, you only obtain $1 from the neighbor because you cannot obtain twice uh, money from the neighbors. They are common neighbors. But if you place a token in this vertex, you spend $1 for this token, but you obtain one and two, $2 from the neighbors. So in total, you obtain $6 from the neighbors and you spend $2 for tokens. So at the end, you receive $4. And it's not difficult to check that it is the maximum possible number that we can obtain for this graph. So this is also the differential of a whole graph G. This uh, parameter has very nice application because social networks such as Facebook and Twitter, uh, they, um, they uh, is an important medium for communication and to deliver information. And uh, in this case, we are interested to choose the best group of nodes. It means the best group of people on the Facebook or Twitter that they have the biggest amount of followers. For example, if we want to show advertisement in Facebook, we have to maybe pay to some influencers. So it means that we choose uh, people on Facebook that have the, uh, the best way to uh, influence the, as much people as possible. It doesn't mean that we have to influence or that we have to show our, uh, that we have to show our advertisement to everybody on Facebook or on Twitter, but we have to find we want to find some balance between how many people see the advertisement and how many people deliver this advertisement. In this type of approach, the differential set is a measure of how this set can influence the rest of the elements. <clears throat> also, we can uh, consider a case when we have a political party and this party is interesting in giving some political talks in some cities of the country to influence the people. And uh, we can consider a, a map of the country as a graph. Each uh, city is a vertex. And to avoid weights in a graph, we assume that uh, each city has the same um, population, is uh, the same importance, and the distances between cities have the same length. And uh, we are interested to organize uh, this uh, talks to influence the people in the country. If we were interested in influencing 
the whole people in the country and the whole cities, we should find the dominating set. We also assume and forgot that if you uh, a person can attend a talk, if the talk is in this city or in a neighbor city. So uh, we only assume that you can attend the meeting with the political party if this meeting takes place in your city or the city close to you, the neighbor city. So if you choose a dominating set, it means that you influence the whole people and you in the country. But uh, from the economical point of view, it has no sense to organize the meeting in a city that nobody from outside arrives. So we are only interested in choosing such a set of cities in this in this uh, in this country. It means nodes in uh, vertices in a graph that we influence as much people as possible, not necessarily everybody. And the idea of viral marketing tries to use customers acquired by specific marketing offers as multiplicators, influencing their immediate neighborhood to buy certain products. In wire marketing, it means that if you <clears throat> publish some uh, interesting ad on, or you like some interesting ad on your profile, then all of your friends on Facebook see this ad. And uh, if they like, they also share, and uh, their friends see this ad. This is, what we call the viral mark, uh, marketing. So this nice approach is very helpful to um, motivate why to work in this uh, topic of differential of a graph. The other um, parameter is a Roman domination. A Roman domination is motivated by the military history. Uh, in the Roman empire, we had to place legions of army in such a way that the city with no branch of army is a neighbor of the city with at least two legions of army. It, it is important because in case of, uh, of the attack of the city with no army, one legion from the army that is a neighbor city may come to help to protect the city. So in, in case of graphs, we have to consider a graph and in this Roman Empire we can uh, consider a graph where each city is a vertex and more possible uh, connections between cities so we have edges and uh, we have to place these armies in these uh, cities. It means we have to give the labels to the vertices <coughs> such that the vertex uh, with label zero, zero means that you have no uh, legion of army in this uh, city, but has to be uh, adjacent to the city with at least two legions of army. It means that it has to be, this vertex has to be adjacent in the graph G to the vertex with label two. So these labels are equal to the number of branches of army in these cities. <clears throat> if we add, all the po uh, all these uh, uh, labels uh, among the whole set of uh, the vertices in the graph G, uh, we receive the weight of the uh, Roman dominating function. Of course, we can place uh, one legion in one city and we are protected. But from the economical point of view, it's not the best option because uh, we want to minimize the cost of the army. So we are interested in uh, such uh, labeling of the vertices that we obtain the Roman dominating function with the minimum weight. And uh, this minimum weight of a Roman dominating functions is called a Roman domination number and we denote it by gamma R of G. We also in this case use notation that we mm, divide uh, the set of the vertices into three subsets subsets v0, v1, and v2. v0 is the set of the vertices with label 0, v1 is the set of the vertices with label 1, and v2 is the set of the vertices with label 2. And uh, uh, this 
uh, labeling is a Roman dominating function if every vertex from V0 has at least one neighbor in V2. Uh, here we can see the same graphs as before, but now we consider a Raman domination number for these graphs. In the first graph, uh, if we uh, give the label two to this uh, vertex with maximum degree, we can give lab labels zero to the neighbors. So every vertex with label zero has a neighbor with label two. Now we have to choose a label for this alone vertex. So we, can, we cannot give zero because we, we don't satisfy the condition, condition that it has a neighbor with label two. We can give label two or one because we are interested in the minimum weight. So we give one. It's not difficult to check that the Roman domination number in this case is equal to three. In the other example, uh, we can easily see that if we put two and two to these two vertices and any other vertex has a label zero, then uh, every vertex with label zero has a neighbor with label two. We cannot find the smaller one. So the Roman domination number is equal to four. And uh, what is the relation between these two parameters? First, we will start from a very famous and old Galais theorem. This is the, the theorem that connects two parameters. One parameter is uh, independence number and the other one is the vertex cover number. Uh, in case of the independence number, we are interested in finding the maximum size of an independent set of a graph G. And of course, the set of the vertices is independent if the vertices in this set are not joined by the edge. And in case of the vertex cover, we are interested to find the minimum number of the vertex cover set. It means the set of such vertices that every edge in the graph G has at least one name, one end vertex in this set. So we maximize one parameter and we minimize the other parameter. And Galai proved that independence number plus vertex cover number is equal to the number of the vertices in a graph G. This is an example of a min-max theorem. Uh, this type of theorems we call like this in graph theory, that we consider two, two parameters. One we maximize, the other one we minimize, and the sum of these parameters is equal to the number of vertices. If we consider these examples here, you can see that here the set of the red vertices it forms independent set, and it is the maximum independent set in this graph. Uh, no two red vertices are joined by the edge. They are independent, and it is the biggest as um, possible set, independent set in this graph. And uh, it's also a vertex cover set, but we are interested in a vertex cover set with the minimum cardinality. So it's better to pick up this one a green vertex from the central vertex of a star, because it's easy to see that every edge in the graph has one green end vertex. Similarly for uh, cycle uh, C6, we, we see that these three vertices, they form independent set is the biggest possible independent set. So the independence number is equal to three. And the vertex cover is also equal to three because if we pick up this three green vertices, then every edge in the cycle has at least one end, green end vertex. And similarly in the last case, here the vertex cover number is equal to three and independent number is also equal to three. In, in each case, uh, we can check that the sum of these parameters is equal to the order of a graph G. And what about our parameters? Our parameters are known for many, many years, and they were studied many, many years separately. But in 2014, Bermudo, Fernau, and Cigaretta, they discovered 
that there is a very nice relation between these two parameters. It means that the um, differential of a graph plus a Roman domination number of a graph is equal to the number of the vertices in a graph. So we again obtain Galais type theorem, or we can say we obtain a min-max theorem because we minimize this parameter, maximize this parameter, and the sum of these parameters is equal to the number of the vertices in a graph G. Uh, from this moment, uh, if we have any results about Roman domination number, we immediately obtain the results for the uh, differential of a graph. We don't have to study these parameters independently. And if we have any result about the differential, we immediately obtain the result for uh, Roman domination number. And if we come back to our example, remember that the differential of this graph was two. It means we can place one token here. We obtain three dollars from the neighbors. We spent one dollar for the token. So our profit is two. And we also checked previously that the Roman domination number in this case is equal to three. You place two legions of army here, one legion here, and no army anywhere. It means that a city with no army has a neighbor with two legions of the army. And the number of the vertices is five, and we can check that three plus two is equal to five. They also gave their recipe uh, how to find Raman dominating function with the minimum weight having a differential set. It means that if we have a graph G and we know how is how looks this differential set that maximizes the profit, it means in this case it's only one vertex, one token placed here. It means that we have to label this vertex with two and the neighbor of this vertex obtain the label zero. And in the other cases, the vertex obtain the label one. And converse, if we have the Roman dominating function with the minimum weight, it means we have this red labeling of the graph. We can create a differential set of a graph G. It means the recipe is like that put the tokens in the vertices with label two. So these two problems are um, uh, complementary problems. And uh, not only, we can consider not only a classical differential and a Roman domination number, uh, now the um, people, uh, the research, they consider different type of differentials and compare this uh, with different type of domination numbers to obtain also this Galais type uh, result and consider both of these uh, parameters. And this is nice place to, uh, to work and continue the research. Thank you for your attention.